1993, I got my 30-something motorcycle. Uh, on the way home, a truck with a brand new motorcycle, a truck pulled in front of me, a King Cab Dually. I slid under the truck, pretty much almost completely cut my lower leg off. Uh, they took me to the uh, hospital in a helicopter. The doctors were going to cut my leg off. I convinced them to get me a second, third opinion, and finally, uh, by signing a bunch of stuff and telling them I was a lawyer and if they cut my leg off they were going to be in trouble, uh, they didn't cut my leg off. So a uh, couple years and a half a million dollars worth of surgery later, I had a leg, but uh, fairly useless and a lot of pain. I had 13 broken bones in this accident, a broken pelvis. Uh, I have rods from my hip to my knee, from my knee to my ankle. I could walk, but uh, mostly with a bad limp and with one foot uh, at a 70 degree angle to one side, lots of pain. Uh, when my pelvis was broken, it's like my butt was broken, and that caused me a lot of pain, actually more than my leg. I was uh, taking Percocets, one a day at least for two or three years, and uh, I threw a, a tennis friend, well, I played tennis. I, one of my uh, best friends was top 100 in the world tennis player, so I was a sparring partner for him. And uh, to get that good at tennis takes a lifetime, and I, here I am, can't play tennis. And uh, that was almost one of the most important things to me and I played in tournaments and I teach tennis even today still. I'm back to teaching today. But uh, and when I tell the doctors I play tennis, they go, well, tennis is not in your future, son. Uh, living is, is in your future if you're lucky. But uh, through, I lived in Florida when all this happened. I moved back to Ohio and ran into uh, Sherry's husband and uh, who played tennis. And I, I went and hit a few tennis balls with him and couldn't run. And he said, well, my wife could help you. So reluctantly, uh, I am, like I said, lawyer and engineer, re reluctantly and with uh, very much, uh, uh, I didn't think that anything she could do was going to help me. I'd been to all kinds of physical therapists. I certainly didn't think that anybody playing any sounds would help me. So I, in humoring her more than anything. Uh, here's the wife of my new tennis buddy. Uh, so in humoring her, I let her play some sounds. She, she guessed at what sounds I needed. I, I found the sounds pleasant that uh, I used to, I was a sailboat charter captain and I was a tugboat captain and I liked the sound of that droning engine that you barely hear which her sounds resemble. They're uh, like a whoa, 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 whoa. And uh, I go, well, there are no needles involved, no pills involved, no pain involved in uh, using this form of therapy. So what have I got to lose? And I like the sound, it helped me sleep. So as much as anything, I used it to go to sleep. Then I started noticing I was having less pain. Within a month or less, I was not taking Percocets or only taking two a week instead of eight or nine a week. Um, uh, and I really hate taking even an aspirin. So getting off of those pills was good. Uh, and then uh, by having that reduction in pain started to allow me to do more. I could run two steps that way and then three steps that way and then five steps that way and after an hour of trying to play tennis what would happen I when I approached Bill I said I'm good enough I can hit the ball anywhere I want to hit it any spin I want but you got to somehow hit it back to me because I can't run and get it so I'll run you all over the place and you don't run me at all is how we got to do this so we did that and of course then I'd take a step and I would have intense pain after tennis and I noticed that I was having less and less pain even though I was doing more and more. And uh, this was about 1999 and it's now 2007 so this is eight years ago. I met Sherry and started doing this. Well within a year I was in a, a no pain situation. Within two years I was in a 
uh, there's nothing wrong with me anymore situation, just learning to run again and also realizing in tennis that I could run again because I would I would let things go that I, uh, you know, I'd forgotten that I could run. And I used to dream that I could run. You know, the, the dream like in the movies where people are slow motion running through the field, I'd have these dreams and uh, uh, and now I don't have those dreams anymore even because I can run, you know. So uh, about all that's wrong with me now, even the form of my leg from the exercise, uh, uh, it was like a football. And you, you may some, see some pictures of it the way it was before, the way it is now. But the only thing wrong with me now is just what my leg looks like. And even the looks of it have vastly improved. I mean, I could get cosmetic surgery, but leave well enough alone and I don't care. It's good for a shark bite story now and then. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I had been to many centers, including Ohio State, Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, and there was a lot of disagreement on what was wrong with me. Um, I remember a, a doctor at Cleveland Clinic thinking I had an autoimmune disease and uh, being an emergency physician, uh, they would have to shut me down every so often since I'd be on very strong immunosuppressant drugs. These are drugs that um, suppress the immune system and set you up for infections and the emergency department where I work is really ripe for infections. So they thought I would frequently have some problems with infections. They were going to put me on high-powered uh, drugs to combat things. Uh, so it was pretty scary uh, the, the way they were going. Uh, I first became ill uh, late summer, early fall 2001. I noticed that there was a problem with me walking. Uh, I was falling, I lost the ability to run, I had tingling numbness on the bottom of my feet. I went to a local neurologist here and he uh, did quite a few tests and they uncovered I had something called a syrinx. Uh, this is a disorder of the spinal cord, almost like an internal cavity where fluid from the inside pushes on pressure on the spinal cord and causes neurologic symptoms. Um, and the treatment for it was neurosurgery where they actually shunt uh, do a procedure where they they open your your vertebrae in the back and they cut into your spinal cord and uh, put a little device to let the fluid out. This was supposed to make me better. You know, at that time, I was walking with a mild limp. Uh, this was like uh, like November of 2001. Uh, over the next four to five months, I progressively got worse. I went from a, a slight limp to uh, walking with a cane. Uh, to using a, a wheeled walker, and then I was pretty much confined to a scooter. Uh, despite the uh, neurosurgical th therapy I had, I had such bad spasticity in my legs, I was on high dose Valium, and also had an internal pump placed in my spinal cord, which administered a medicine to take care of the spasticity of my legs. Uh, my legs were so tight, it's hard to bend my legs at the hips and knees, almost impossible for me to get in and out of a car. I remember finishing a shift in the emergency department. The nurses would come by and actually help me get in my car and slowly wait for my legs to relax well enough I could just bend them to get in into my vehicle and get home. Uh, I was driving with hand controls at the time, but just getting in and out of the car was a major undertaking, uh, despite all the medications I were taking at that time. Uh, we weren't sure what was wrong. I went to see a, a neurologist at Ohio State um, they had checked my spinal fluid and based on what they saw in the spinal fluid, uh, they thought I had uh, primary progressive multiple sclerosis based on that. And they uh, offered me chemotherapy uh, for multiple sclerosis. The type of chemotherapy that you get is called Novantrone. It's uh, toxic to your heart. Uh, you can only give it for two years. Um, and then after that, there's no treatment left. Uh, this didn't sound very uh, endearing to me. I, I opted not to have that. I, I wanted another opinion. Uh, I subsequently went to the Cleveland Clinic where they were not really sure what was wrong, thought I had some type of autoimmune disease. And again, I went for another opinion to the Mayo Clinic. And uh, once again, they uh, were a neurologist saying, well, you know, you seem to have picked all these symptoms out from so many different possibilities and just really wanted to start all over and repeat all the tests that I've had done. And, I had already been through at least uh, 15 MRI scans of my uh, head, neck, uh, body. I had complete CAT scans done, had all sorts of exotic blood work done, which really did not lead them one way or the other. And so at that point, I, I remember the neurologist uh, leaving me, shaking my hand, and telling me how sorry he was for me. 
And at that point, I, I knew I needed to do something different than other what you know, current modern medicine could do for me, and so I started looking for other answers. At, at this point, uh, I saw another local physician who uh, recommended certain things. I did things such as acupuncture, um, all sorts of uh, different types of medical treatment out there, and she also recommended bioacoustics. So there was actually a place in Ohio that offered such treatment. And at that point was my first visit with uh, Sherry Edwards and, and Sound Health. And I believe this would have been towards the end of uh, 2003, perhaps 2004, I'm not sure the exact year. Um, and at this point I was, I was looking pretty rough. I was getting around with a wheeled walker. It was, I still remember going up to her place in the wintertime trying to get up this hill to get through her door. I'm thinking, boy, you know, maybe I should just turn around and go back home. Uh, but I'm glad I did. And she did uh, spend a lot of time with me, did an assessment, and uh, did something called a vocal print. And at that point, found uh, some some problems. Um, did not think it was multiple sclerosis. Thought it was more of a traumatic problem to my spinal cord, and uh, had actually uh, given me certain tones to use uh, for this. And I, I've gone back subsequently now for the last few years, and happy to report I've gone from a person that could uh, was working part time, barely making it through the day, to uh, someone who um, is a full time uh, chairman of the department, uh, sees more patients uh, than any other of the 13 doctors that are here, off all medications. Uh, my internal spinal pump removed last year. Uh, I had them check my spinal fluid. Nothing to suggest any abnormalities, nothing to suggest any multiple sclerosis or anything like that. So I really doubt if I really had the disorder to begin with. Even more glad that I didn't take chemotherapy for it, for something I probably didn't have. And uh, very grateful to what I have now. At this point, I walk with a cane. Uh, I still have uh, stiffness in my legs, weakness, and some numbness, but it's nowhere near it was before. Uh, pretty much have a normal active life. You know, I, I, I can't run at this point, but uh, I, I haven't closed the book on that yet, and I hope to uh, be rid of the cane and be back to normal at, at, at some point. So it's going to have to continue to work with it. I use a tone box. I, I keep a tone box playing uh, every night. I have it hooked up to a subwoofer. Uh, when I have a chance, I will uh, attach it to headphones and listen to them, especially if I'm exercising. Um, and yeah, and I go back to see Sherry every, every few months and we do another voice print, we find some other things that might help out, and uh, just tremendous benefit. And it works for other things as well. You know, one of the things, um, uh, my, my wife uh, brought a cat into our life, a cat that she's had for years, which I was uh, pretty strongly allergic to. Sneezing, head congestion, itchy eyes, coughing, wheezing. And I said, what can you do to help me? Well, she played the tones for cat allergy. Cat allergy gone, <laughs> tremendously. So I think that's how I made my wife a believer because she did not see me when I was, uh, impaired as, as badly as I was, and when she saw the change there, she was quite impressed at how well it worked.